We greet you this morning, saints, in the name of the Lord Jesus. And for those who will be viewing this ministry video by YouTube, we greet you and we welcome you to be a part of this service this morning. It's a joy and a privilege to bring the word of the Lord to you, the ministry of the word of the kingdom of God. Open your Bible with me to the book of Psalms 24. We're going to go back there where we began last Sunday. I got a feeling that we're going to have a series on this. Have had a series since we uh, came back, but I got a feeling we're going to have a, a series on this message. Bless the Lord. Previous messages was that uh, can God's word be trusted? The next one was the glory has been restored. And this one today, and yes, last Sunday was kingdom provisions and presentations, and this is going to be part two of that message. Because God wants us, God wants us to become kingdom-minded. We, we are, you know, religious-minded, and I'm not saying that in a, in a negative manner. We are more religious minded than we are kingdom minded because we got we have the church all mixed up with our government. But here's what we need to realize. Here's what we need to understand. God's word isn't changing. Even though people try to modernize it, we try to change it to suit people's thinking. We have this expression, meeting people where they are. Yes, God meets you where you are with the message of the kingdom. And the reason why God isn't changing his word is because this is about, this is God's message for his kingdom, not the kingdoms of the earth. Not the kingdoms of the earth. Not American government. This is about the kingdom of God. And the kingdom of God is already established. So it doesn't need to change. The change that needs to be made is for those who are coming into the kingdom. And if we change this word to suit, so to speak, modern thinking, you pervert the gospel. So we have to, we have to get our mind renewed and start thinking like God. Because we naturally don't think like God. We, think like, we don't think like Mexicans, so to speak, in Mexico. We are Americans, so to speak, naturally, I'm speaking naturally now. We are American citizens. We don't think like Asian people. We're American citizens. We have a culture of our own as Americans. We have a way of cooking. Your way you cook is a part of your culture. And we have different cultures within cultures. The black community have a culture. The Hispanic community have a culture. The Caucasians or the white community have a culture. And we have, uh, we have a mixture of people now until uh, you don't hardly know which is which. Yeah. Amen. Amen. But when in all of these communities, they have a culture. Uh, the culture that I was raised up in, especially in the South, we were known for cooking greens. Amen. Collard green, turnip green, mustard greens, and ham hock, and all that kind of stuff, and fried chicken, and fish, fried fish. That's part of the, that's part of the African American culture, especially in the South. Amen. And I remember you, if you, want to, you want to get some good catfish, you go down to Blytheville. <laughs> Coast Fred's catfish house isn't there any longer. <laughs> but you want some good fried food you go south uh, the north is finally trying to catch up <laughs> but we have all of these cultures we have a way of speaking uh, the African American in the south speak differently from those who are in the north we have a kind of a draw on our, on our speech I say some of them do. We don't <laughs> have a draw on our speech. And the Caucasians have a different 
twang on their, on their speech. You go further, forth, further south you go, amen, the more distinct the language is. Yes. Amen. So we have all of these cultures. And in the kingdom of God, there is a culture. The kingdom of heaven's culture, God wants it to be imparted to the earth. And so we have to learn to think like God. Amen. How does God think? Well, this is his word. His word tells us how he thinks. See, you, you, I know what you're thinking by your action. And I'm not mean I know everything. I know to a degree what you're thinking by your actions and by what you say. So we know what God thinks to a degree, especially when it comes to us. Now, when it comes to angels... We might not know what God is thinking because the angels have a language of their own. If you, want to, if you want to look at it like this, the angels have a culture. They are spirit beings, but they are not human spirits. So they have a language and they can speak our language. And Paul says in his writing, he said, Though I may speak, to the, uh, speak in the tongues of angels and men, and don't have love, it profits me nothing. So the angels have a language. They can speak any language. God has given them that ability. And we can learn. See, they don't have to learn it. But we can learn to speak any language. Amen. You can learn. If you take an African-American child, and before they learn to speak, put them in the family where people are speaking Spanish, they'll speak Spanish. They learn to speak it by listening to the parents or to the person that, that, give them, that influences them. So we can learn. Don't say what you can't do. I mean, within reason. Now, you can't be God. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> but you can think like God. You can raise the level of your thinking. And that's what God wants us to do. He wants us to raise the level of our thinking when it comes, when it regards his word because his word is high. So he wants us to learn to think like him. Amen. <clears throat> Last Sunday I spoke from Psalms 21. And I asked the question, what good is a kingdom if it doesn't have provisions? And I made mention the fact that one of the candidates for president is promising American citizens that if they are elected, he's elected, he and his partner is elected, he'll protect us. And that's, that's good. We want someone that can, so to speak, protect us. We want someone to provide for us. And we don't want someone, those of us who are of the age, drawing Social Security, we don't want no one taking that from us. And those of you who are not on it, you want it to be there when you come of age. So you want somebody that is going to protect it. And uh, President, uh, uh, the Vice President Biden says, if he's elected, the, the Social Security payment will increase by $1,300. That's a pretty good increase, isn't it? And then on the other end, he says, if the other man is, is reelected, it, you lose it. So if I was going to vote for somebody on that basis, guess who I'd vote for? <laughs> Hallelujah. So, so the kingdom of God have the power and the ability to provide. It provides. We live in such a limited world of knowledge, especially when it comes to spiritual things. Our knowledge is so limited when it comes to spiritual things, whereas it should, it should be broader than our knowledge in natural things because spiritual, the spiritual is greater than the natural. The spiritual is the parent of the natural. Every natural thing you see came out of the spirit realm. A spirit being created all of this. And in Psalms 24, it says this, The earth is the Lord. The earth is the Lord's. 
and all its fullness, everything in the earth is his. Then he goes on to say, the world, he could have stopped right there. But he wanted, to, he wanted those who were exposed to the word of God to know that, yes, the earth, and he's talking about the dirt, earth, the rocks and everything that, cons, that constitutes the earth. He wants them to know, he wants us to know that that belongs to God and everybody in it. Everybody. Everybody belongs to God. Everybody. The sinner is his. In the book of Ezekiel, God says, every soul, all souls are mine. Every soul is his. Because after all, who put man on this planet? He didn't put himself here. Every, every human being on this planet that ever was on this planet and that is on this planet came from a man and a woman. They couldn't get here any other way because that's how God designed the earth to be populated. It takes a man and a woman to produce another human being. No other union can do it. Because man has the seed, he has one part of the seed, and the woman has the other part. So without the woman, the man can't be a father. Without the man, the woman can't be a mother. I mean, she can't produce. She, the man fertilizes, the seed in the man fertilizes the seed in the woman. And it produces another human being. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So that's how the earth is populated. And that's how it will always be populated. On this side of the resurrection. The earth is the Lord's and all of its, all of its fullness. You know, we are, we are really stewards we're really stewards. Now, in our society, we have the privilege of owning property and whatnot. And, but, in, but in our reality, you don't own anything. We, you don't, we don't own nothing. And yet we, 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 we purchase property. And uh, then the government says, well, you got to pay taxes on it. Well, now, if, if it was mine all out, I wouldn't pay nobody taxes on it. But we have to pay taxes on it. And if you don't pay taxes, you lose it. I don't care how much you have invested in it. If you don't pay taxes, you lose it. Why? Because it's not absolutely yours. It's under those that has authority over you. Amen. I want to, I want to elaborate a little bit this morning on this, on this issue of kingdom. I want to give you some scriptures, if you will, because God wants us to be, become more kingdom minded. And, and, in, and in order for that to happen, we have to think like that. I, 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 I have the suspicion that we need to cut out a lot of stuff that we're listening to. Because the more, the, the, the majority of your thinking, or shall I say, the majority of the things that you give your mind to is what you think about. Whatever you spend time thinking on the most, that's what rules your thoughts. So if you want, if we're going to start, if we're going to start thinking like God, if we're going to become kingdom minded, we're going to have to start thinking that way and listening to things that plants that seed in us. 
And it's the word of God that does that. All right. In the book of Psalms, 145, verse 13, it says, Your kingdom is an everlasting. Now listen to this. Your kingdom is an everlasting kingdom. An everlasting kingdom. And your dominion endures throughout all generations. Is this a different generation? Those of us who are Christians, we're part of a different generation. Well, if his dominion endures throughout all generations, his dominion endures is enduring now Amen. over this generation. And yet, society is trying to produce a generation of people that is, that is free of God's kingdom. Amen. The number of people in this country who are believers is going down. People don't, many, people don't believe in God like they used to. And I don't know if, I don't know if uh, people even know about Jesus and what he has done. And here's, here's what a lot of young folks say now. When you talk about believing in God, they say, well, I believe in myself. Amen. That's what a lot of young folks say now. That's their expression. I believe in myself. Okay. What can you do? <laughs> now, it's not right to believe in yourself if you're believing correctly. You need, you, need to be conf you need to be a person of confidence, but you don't need to make a God out of yourself. Amen. You don't need to put yourself on the pedestal of where you are self-existing. Because if you think you are self-existing, you are greatly deceived. Amen. There is but one self-existing being, and that's God. God is self-existing. And what does it mean by self-existing? It means that he doesn't need anything outside of himself to exist. But everything else does. I need something outside of me to exist. I need oxygen. I can't produce my own oxygen. I need oxygen to live. Oxygen and water are two substances that you got to have. You can't live long without water. You, can't, you can live longer without water than you can without oxygen. Everywhere you go, everywhere, these, everywhere we go in these earth bodies, we got to have the oxygen that is in this atmosphere. If we go to Mars, you got to take some of this oxygen with you. If you go to the moon, you got to take some of this oxygen with you because if there is any there, it's not like this oxygen. See, earth was created for man. It is the third planet from the sun. And you look at that, and, and it's, it's circulating, it's revolving around the sun. And there is this place called the earth that God put there and put us on it and made us stewards over it. And it's continually revolving around the sun, spinning at a thousand miles an hour. And back years ago, before science, you know, really advanced, they thought the earth was flat. And they felt if you went far enough, you would fall off the edges. But when they began to, through microscopes, they, began, they found out that the earth was round. But now, that's a great mystery. It's round. And it's spinning. That's what makes the sun, so to speak, go up and go down. This side of the earth is coming up. Whereas last night, we were on the bottom. We were on the bottom of this round planet, but nobody fell off. Isn't that something? Nobody fell off. The water didn't fall off. It's all help. It's all stays where God puts it. Put it. God's, listen, God's word put it there. Yes. <laughs> Reverend Andrew, bring me my bottle of water there. I'm going to give you a little demonstration. 
<laughs> Thank you. Someone, the ushers puts this out here every Sunday for me to drink just in case I get thirsty. I'm not going to make y'all do a cleanup. But I want to I show you something. As long as this water stays in this bottle, it's safe, so to speak. Well, what if I turn it up? What's going to happen? It's going to spill out, isn't it? You probably can't see that, but you did see that little drop? Spilling out, it's coming out. God placed this planet round as it is. Third planet from the sun. Put us on it. Put water on it. Made it a suitable place. Gave us an atmosphere. Gave us clouds. Gave us an earth that will produce food. And while this earth is revolving and spinning, everybody stays in place. You fly your airplanes in the atmosphere. You walk on this earth. You walk, listen, y'all better not go out at night. You might fall off <clears throat> because you're on the bottom. You don't think about that, do you? We don't think about that. You stay where God puts you. And I've lately found out, especially these, I forget now what cloud it is, because clouds are different, and I'm sure some of the clouds weigh more than others. But they say some of these clouds, especially these fluffy clouds that you see in the, in this, in the summertime, these great big clouds. And I didn't think about it, but I've flown through them on the airplane. 1.1 million pounds that cloud weighs but it doesn't fall on us. Yeah. Why? God told it to stay there. Yeah. And it's doing what God says. Yeah. Hallelujah. Your kingdom is an everlasting kingdom and your dominion endures throughout all, 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 I don't care what generation comes up. God's kingdom endures through it and over it. Psalm 146 says, The Lord shall reign forever. Your God, O Zion, to all generations. He's not going to stop because we, in this, so to speak, scientific age and, and in this space age, we're getting ready now to go to Mars. And uh, I think they have a a craft on its way to Mars now. They do. They have a craft that's on its way to Mars to examine the atmosphere. You're going to take some dust samples, some particles, and, and to find out, you know, as much about Mars as they can from the samples that they gather. And, uh, but they really want to know if it's suitable for living. Can a person live there? Well, let me say it like this. Yes. If he takes some of the earth's atmosphere and some of the produce of the earth, if he take it with him. Right. And they want to find out, can you farm there? Well, do you have any rain? What kind of, what, how much rain do we get on Mars? How much rain do we get on the moon? The moon is a cold place. And yet it's out there where God put it. But the, listen, the concentration of heat focus upon those first three planets. And Earth is the third planet. Very, very easy makes jam. S-U-N spells sun. This leaves Pluto out of the cold. That's the nine planets. Pluto is way out there. And they clear, somebody said Pluto is not a planet. But it's in this structure. Mary, Mercury, Venus, 
this earth, the first three planets, Mercury is the hottest. Earth is the third one. It is the one that is suitable for human life. That your God created, that your God, your Father, spoke it into existence. He didn't use a hammer and a chisel. Saints, he, he said it. I said, he said it. Let the earth bring forth. When there was nothing, when the earth was chaotic, when it was in a mess, there was no light. God said, let there be light. Glory to God. When the earth was bare, God spoke to it and said, produce apples, peaches, turnip greens. Collards, mustard, avocado, peaches, grapefruit, lemon, lime. God said it. God said it. God said it. I said God said it. And God said this. No evil shall befall you, and neither shall any plague come near your dwelling. For he gives his angels charge over you to keep you in all of your ways and in their hand they bear you up lest you dash your foot against the stone. It's really talking about Jesus but I have, I have a share in that. Come on. The same protection that Jesus gets, I get. <laughs> Come on because I'm a, I'm a son just like Jesus is. Oh, glory to Jesus. And listen to me. The, one, the reason why the Jesus was so protected is because he activated the word of God which was spoken concerning him. He said what God said concerning him. You have to say what God says concerning you. You have to make God your declaration and confession. That is your protection. Your word is my buckler and shield. <laughs> oh, glory to Jesus. Isaiah 9, are y'all following me? Isaiah 9 says this, and he's, he's talking about Jesus. For unto us a child is born, 9 and 6. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given. And the government, the government, the wise men came and said, where is he that is born king of the Jews? The government will be upon his shoulders. And his name will be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. And of the increase of his government and peace, there will be no end upon the throne of David and over, the king, over his kingdom to order it and establish it with judgment and justice from that time forward, even forever. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform it. Now listen to this. Let me go back to this seventh verse and read this again. It says, of the, in, of the his kingdom is increasing. It's not diminishing. I don't care how people try to put God out. He's still increasing. I don't care how men try to silence God's word, so to speak, with man's knowledge and with his scientific abilities. <laughs> oh, we are, we are, as human beings, we are, we are creatures. We are, we are, we are, we're smart, we're wise. Uh, they're, they, 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 they're in the making this an experimental process, but they're making cars now that fly. I saw one uh, a few days ago, as a matter of fact, last week, a car that flies. I mean, how many are ready to buy one? <laughs> Can you imagine that? I can't imagine Mr. Mr. O's and Ford, Rio, Mr. Ford. I didn't. I, didn't, I wonder did they ever think about some of their cars flying? Now that's not an airplane. Now it's an automobile. It run on the street like an automobile. 
and get, fold his wings in, and then when he get ready to fly, lift the wings out, take off and fly. Herbert W. Armstrong, I didn't, he was on years ago back in the 60s and the 50s. He was off key. But Herbert W. Armstrong said, in the coming future, people would have helicopters in their driveway like they have automobiles. It's almost coming to that. You flying cars? Where's man going to end? What is the end of his inventions? Come on. There are no ends to them. Man will continually be uh, uh, learning and experimenting and learning and advancing. But now, uh, is all of this knowledge bringing him to God? No. No. Let me go back to this seventh verse. Of the increase, everybody say increase. increase. Now, if the word of God says if his, his government is going to increase, then it's, it's, it's increasing at this very moment. It's not decreasing. Of the increase of his government and peace. There is peace. There's, you, you know we're living in a we're living, in, we're living in the midst of this movement now, justice. People want justice. But I think, I, like, I ask myself, do they really want justice or revenge? Which one? You want justice? Of the increase of his government and peace. Everybody say peace. peace. Nobody talking about peace. People talking about justice. Of the increase of his government and peace, there will be no end upon the throne of David and over his kingdom to order it and establish it with judgment. Now this is not Secular judgment, this is righteous judgment. This is not judgment that is getting even. This is not judgment out of revenge. This is righteous judgment. Judgment that is executed on the basis of a person's works in righteousness. To order it and establish it with judgment and justice from that time forward, even, even forever, the zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. Daniel 2, 44. And in the days of these kings, the God of heaven will set up a kingdom which will never be destroyed. Now, David, excuse me, Daniel had was interpreting a dream that Nebuchadnezzar had. He didn't know the meaning of it. So he called his astrologers in and all of the wise men of Babylon and told them, but he was wise. He told them, I had a dream. Now, I want the interpretation of it, but I'm not going to tell you what the dream was. You're going to have to tell me the dreams and its interpretation so I know that you know what the dream, you know that your interpretation is right. And they said, no king ever demanded such thing of his people because they couldn't tell the dream. He said, now I know you, you, you want time and you prepared lies to tell me lies, et cetera, et cetera. And they said, there ain't nobody living can tell you what you dream, let alone the interpretation. Ex but the one whose God is not among the living. In other words, the God of heaven can, tell, can, can, can give you the secrets. So he ordered all of the wise people to be killed, executed. So Arioch was on the, in the process of killing the wise men of Babylon. The news came to Daniel. And he went to this man and said, why is the king's urgent? Uh, why is his decision so urgent? 
and he told Daniel what the decision of the king was. And, and, and Daniel says he spoke to him in wisdom. In other words, he spoke to him by the inspiration of God and told him, give, me, give us some time. So he called Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and they went to God in prayer. And in that process, God told them what the king had dreamed. And plus, he told him what the interpretation was. And the promise was that whoever can tell me the dream and the interpretation will be honored and promoted in the kingdom. But none of those guys could tell what the dream was. Why? Because the dream came from God. You don't look to people that don't know God to get an answer from God. <laughs> Hallelujah. You go to the one that knows God. Saints, do you know why you're on this planet? Do you know one of the reasons why you're on this planet? is so that people can come to you for an answer from God. The answer of God is in the body. But if we are disconnected, saints, don't let nobody disconnect you from heaven. Don't let nobody, don't let, I don't care, don't let anything disconnect you from the one who lives on the inside of you. Stay connected to the Holy Spirit. Fellowship with him every day. Don't be religious with the Holy Spirit. He come to represent the king. His message is about the kingdom. He wants to tell you about the kingdom. God hasn't given us his word for us to dissect it into any religious idea that we think is suitable. This is God's message. This is God telling us what the future is. This is God telling us our purpose. This is God telling us who we are. The end has already been proclaimed. We're kingdom people. I said we're kingdom people. We have been born into the kingdom of God. John says in Revelation to him who loved us and washed us from our sin in his own blood and has made us kings and priests to your God and Father. To you be glory and dominion forever and ever. Hallelujah. Ah, glory to Jesus. I'm not going to get through all of these today. Amen. But Daniel says, and in those days, and in the days of these kings, the God of heaven will set up a kingdom which will never be destroyed. And the kingdom shall not be left to other people. It shall break in pieces and consume all these kingdoms. See, in this, in this dream, Daniel, uh, uh, the king Nebuchadnezzar, so all of these kings that were coming up after him, he was the head of gold. And all of these other aspects that he saw in the dream represented kingdoms. Alexander Great was one of them. But this stone that was cut out of the mountain without hand crushed them. Alexander, they said, when he conquered, he conquered, he conquered so many nations. And after he had conquered everybody he could conquer, they say he sat down and cried because there was no other body to conquer. Alexander Great is right in here in Daniel. Daniel saw him. But listen, Daniel didn't just see Alexander Great. He just didn't see the Greek or Persian nation. He just didn't see the Roman nation. He saw all of these nations and he saw their dominion. But Daniel saw the kingdom, glory to God, being given to the people of the saints. Oh, hallelujah! Come on to me. We're on our way to our kingdom that God has established for us. Glory to Jesus. Whew. Whew. And in the days, my time is about gone. And in the days of these kings, the God of heaven will set up a kingdom which will never be destroyed. And the kingdom shall not be left to other people. It shall break in pieces and consume all of these kingdoms, and it shall stand forever. Daniel 9, 13, 14, I'm going to have to stop with this one. I watched in the night season, and behold, one like the Son of Man, coming with the clouds of heaven. 
Hallelujah. Coming with the clouds of heaven. He came to the ancient of days. That's God. Hallelujah. And they brought him near before him. Then to him was given dominion and glory. A kingdom that all people, nations, and language shall serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion which shall not pass away. And his kingdom, the one which will not be destroyed. Hallelujah. And that's the kingdom that we are a part of today. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> I didn't get through it all, but we got next Sunday coming. Oh, glory to Jesus. Stand on your feet.